In today's finishing one-on-one -on -one video, I'm going to show you how to use a pore filler to achieve a glass smooth finish. So deciding when to use the pore filler is basically a personal preference, uh, but you typically see people use pore fillers on high gloss finishes like this sample board of walnut that I have over here uh, because they want it to be smooth to the touch and then when they look at it at an angle, they don't want to see the dips in the valleys of all the open pores. So they would apply a pore filler to it before applying their top coat. Now another reason to use a pore filler is if you're painting a piece such as this oak here, uh, with this front side with the pore filler in it, it looks like a completely different species. You don't see any of the pores. So if you have some old oak cabinets that you want to paint but you don't like the look of the open pores, uh, using a pore filler can completely change the look of that. Now to apply or to fill the pores, there's several different ways that you can do that. You can apply several different coats of your, uh, of your top coat, sand it back, leaving the finish in the pores. And then you can also use an oil-based uh, slurry method like a Danish oil or a boiled linseed oil where you'd put the oil on the surface, take sandpaper and sand it to create a slurry and then wipe it across in the grain uh, to fill the pores that way. Or you can use an aftermarket product. This is a water-based pore filler from Aquacoat. They sent me this can to, to give a try. Uh, this is water-based, dries fast so you can get several coats on in a day and you can tint it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to apply it on three different sample boards. This walnut piece where it's just uh, fill the pores and put a varnish on top. This painted piece where we'll fill the pores and spray paint it. And then finally, I'll show you how to deal with a sample board where if you're going to stain the piece and you still wanted to fill the pores. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right into it. I begin by prepping the surface of the sample boards by sanding them up to 150 grit on my orbital sander. Off camera, I pre-raised the grain on the sample board that will be getting the dye since the dye is water-based and it will raise the grain. And after the board dried, I sanded it back again with the 150 grit. So I just sanded the surfaces and I'm going to clean off any excess dust just using a brush just to clean them up a little bit. So before applying the pore filler on the, uh, these two sample boards, I'm going to apply a coat of de-wax shellac. This is the uh, bullseye uh, seal coat, thin 50-50 with denatured alcohol. I'm going to put this on the raw wood before applying the pore filler. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other sample board, but I'm going to apply the, uh, the dye first before applying the uh, shellac. The third sample board will be getting a coat of dye. To apply the dye, I flood the surface using a paper towel to let it fully absorb into the pores. I'll follow that up with a clean paper towel to remove any excess dye that was left on the surface to prevent streaking. After the dye dried on the sample board, I'll follow that up with a coat of de-wax shellac, applying it with a cotton cloth. With the shellac dried, I can now apply the pore filler. I take a scrap piece of wood and put some filler on the surface and use a plastic spreader to spread the filler into the pores. When applying the pore filler, it's important that you make the coats as thin as possible. You only want the filler in the pores and not on the surface. The more buildup you have on the surface, the more sanding you will have to do in between coats. I continue spreading the pore filler until the entire surface is covered. After applying the pore filler, I'll follow that up by wiping the surface with a paper towel across the grain to remove the excess filler, but leaving it in the pores. And that's all there is to it. I'm just going to let this set to the side and dry. And that's the first, first coat of the clear coat, or the pore filler rather. So now I'm going to move on and do the same thing to the, uh, the oak. I found a minimum of three coats is required with this stuff, at least for the uh, mahogany and the oak and the walnut that I have. And finally, I apply the pore filler to the dyed sample board. So the first coat of pore filler is dried and now I'm going to sand the surface with 320 grit sandpaper. You want to be especially careful on the stained piece that you don't sand through the sealer coat and into the stain because you will start to sand the, the, uh, the stain or the dye and of course you're going to change the color and the appearance of it. So just be extremely careful when sanding the, uh, the dyed or the stained piece. So what I'm doing here is just sanding the, uh, the pore filler that's left on the surface. And as you can see, it'll start to chalk up a little bit. And uh, that's all the sanding that I need to do on this piece because again, I don't want to take a chance and sand through my sealer coat. So I'm going to set it to the side and sand the rest 
of the sample boards. And so now I'm going to clean the surface. I like to use a brush followed up by a paper towel. With one coat of pore filler applied and sanded, I apply the second and third coats the same exact way. After the last coat of pore filler dried, I sanded it again with 320 grit and now I'm ready to apply the top coat. Like with most of my projects, I wiped on a couple coats of a wiping varnish, sanding in between coats with the same 320 grit sandpaper. And for the painted piece, I sprayed two coats of black spray paint. And what we're left with is an extremely smooth surface. And if you wanted to take this to a high gloss sheen, you would have a mirror-like surface that is glass smooth. I recommend giving the AquaCoat pore filler a try the next time you need to fill pores in your project. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next build video.